we can know the hour, the hour of the rapture. In Revelation 3, verse 3, it says, Remember how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. To paraphrase Revelation 3, verse 3, if you will not watch, um, if you don't keep watch, you will not know the hour. The reverse is that if we do keep watch, we will know the hour, or we will be able to know the hour. The knowledge will be accessible. So Revelation 3, verse 3, is a rebuttal to those who say we cannot know the day or the hour. I'm talking about the time of of the rapture, of course. Now, why would keeping watch um, or watching uh, make a difference? How can we grasp the time of the rapture by watching? What does watching really mean? Well, you could say watching means being alert, uh, focusing on studying about. Uh, the idea is, uh, back in Matthew uh, 24, uh, Christ says, Matthew 24, verse 43 says, no, But know this, that if the master of the house had known the hour, had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, he would have watched, and not allowed his house to be broken into. Now Christ is uh, uh, comparing himself to a thief that comes uh, in the night. And, and we are like the homeowner uh, and watching is basically uh, keeping up with uh, what's going on, uh, being alert. The idea is, if we study the text, and uh, not only the text, but the whole issue of the end time, uh, we would see that the rapture occurs in conjunction with the sudden destruction that is found just three verses later. I'm talking about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5, uh, verse 16 and 17 of chapter 4 is the rapture. And three verses later, chapter 5, verse 3, it says there'll be sudden destruction. Now a person who's watching is a person who would, who, would, who would notice that. This sudden destruction is what causes people's souls to depart their bodies at the rapture. Because the sudden destruction is killing a great multitude of people, multi-millions. Multi Once we see that mass death is occurring due to the sudden destruction, uh, this tells us that if we can identify what that sudden destruction is and when it occurs, when it should occur, uh, then we can tell when the rapture will occur. It will occur 
at the very time of that sudden destruction. Now what is this sudden destruction referring to? Well, we read that the rapture will occur uh, the soonest that it can occur is at the revealing of the son of destruction. It says the rapture has to wait until the man of sin is revealed, the son of destruction. So this tells us that, uh, okay, the son of destruction means the destroyer. And so the rapture has to wait until the destroyer is revealed. And what would reveal this person to be, quote, the destroyer? It would be the destruction that he, that he causes or that he is responsible for. It's mass destruction. And who can be uh, the destroyer? It has to be a government official. Only governments have access to uh, armies and military forces and nuclear bombs. And so this man of sin has to be the head of a government of a very powerful nation uh, uh, so that, so that it, it gives him access to this great, um, to this great uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction. Logically speaking, the sudden destruction in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3 is what should reveal the destroyer to be the destroyer. Uh, and this, this is, I'm talking about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. The idea is the destruction in 1 Thessalonians is authorized by the destroyer in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 he is responsible for it for it this is confirmed in revelation 13:7 where the beast makes war upon the saints and overcomes them and he gains power over every nation it says that in black and white. Now the idea is he makes war against the nations where the Christians live, the predominantly Christian nations. Now America is the leading Christian nation uh, de facto. It's not officially Christian, but it is uh, predominantly Christian. I'm saying the man who is called, quote, the beast here in Revelation 13, 7, uh, is synonymous with the man called the man of sin and the destroyer, the son of destruction, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. He is, another, another name for him is the Antichrist. Uh, let me uh, try to uh, go over this one more time. The sudden destruction would be synonymous with the war that the beast makes against the saints, the Christians, the Christian countries. And so the sudden destruction is wartime destruction. Now this particular war is a war which gains the destroyer power over every nation. That's from Revelation 13:7. Now, uh, every nation, uh, uh, isn't that synonymous with the world? So this war uh, sounds like a world war, which is synonymous with nuclear war. And so that's how I would take it, that the sudden destruction is nuclear war. And so the rapture is occurring at the time of sudden destruction, in other words, at the time of nuclear war. The rapture occurs at the time of nuclear war. Get that into your head. Now, we can uh, narrow down which nation is the most likely candidate to be 
the aggressor nation in this war. It's got to be a superpower nation. There are two superpowers, America and Russia. Now, why does it, why does it have to be a superpower nation? Because if a lesser nation try to take over the world uh, by making war against the uh, Christian nations, uh, one of the superpower nations could wipe them out, could stop them, dead in their tracks. So it's got to be a superpower that takes over the world. And America is a superpower, but we're not, going, we're not the type that would try to take over the world, so that leaves only Russia as the obvious choice as the superpower nation that is likely to try to take over the world. It's predatory enough. It's uh, cold-blooded enough. Um, it's still communist uh, under the surface. And communist, by definition, means atheist. Communism is uh, founded on the uh, premise that there is no God. Uh, see, uh, Karl Marx uh, was the founder of communism, and uh, he was a German, but Lenin, Vladimir Lenin in Russia, uh, took Marxist ideas and uh, applied them in Russia. See, Marxism uh, preaches against uh, the capitalists, the businessmen, and uh, like the royalty, and uh, not only that, uh, the church in many nations uh, buddies up to the power structure, the people at the top. And so the church uh, preaches uh, submission to the power structure. And so Karl Marx said, if we're going to be against the uh, people at the top, we might as well be against the Christian church because it supports the uh, power structure. And so Lenin applied this idea in Russia, and so uh, atheism, to make a long story short, atheism is part of communism. And so uh, wouldn't you say that atheists, a certain type of atheist is capable of launching nuclear war, pressing the button? I would have to say, uh, Atheists have shown uh, the way they've killed. Okay, the 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 atheists in Russia uh, uh, kill like uh, twenty million people, if not forty million. Uh, Stalin uh, wanted to wipe out the uh, kulaks, the rich peasants, and he starved them in uh, the Ukraine. It was a, a great famine, man-made famine. Uh, uh, China, uh, sixty million people in China. Uh, or die because of the uh, atheists at the top. The, the communists are, 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 are terrible atheists. They're predatory atheists. There are good atheists, but uh, there is a predatory type, and that's what I'm talking about. Getting back to the issue of, of uh, how can we determine when the rapture will occur. So far, we've found the rapture occurs when Russia bombs America. So uh, the question is, when would Russia be most likely to bomb America? When America has a strong arsenal with which they can retaliate, or when America has disarmed so that our arsenal is only a shadow of its former self? Well, the answer is obvious. Russia will wait until America has disarmed. So that tells us when the rapture will occur, when America has finished disarming uh, to the satisfaction of Russia. Now, how far along on the road to disarmament have we come? Well, Russia made peace uh, to get us to disarm, and that was back in the late 1980s. It's been like 30 years. And um, we've been uh, disarming steadily. And in 2010, Obama signed the disarmament treaty that uh, put us over the line. Uh, we crossed the threshold. 
and we have come, we have disarmed enough so that Russia is now satisfied that it can bomb us without us bombing Russia back because Russia can destroy uh, enough of our arsenal on the ground and um, uh, uh, destroy our submarines in port and destroy our, our bombers on the ground. Uh, long story short, Russia faces missiles from only eight American submarines at sea and uh, we only have 1120 warheads on those eight submarines. Now Russia has enough ABMs which are interceptor missiles enough ABMs to shoot down 1,300 warheads. So subtract 1,300 from 1,120 and you see that we have nothing. Our, our Russia can shoot down everything we have. So this is at the time that Russia will attack and this is the time, the general time of the rapture. Uh, the only thing left uh, that we can turn to are the feast days of the Old Testament. Paul said the feast days of the law are prophetic of things to come. That's um, Hebrews 10 verse 1 or 2 and Colossians 2 verse uh, 16 and 17. Now the idea is that uh, the Feast of Tabernacles is coming up in the end of September and uh, the last day is, I think, uh, October the 1st. It's the eighth day. And uh, I would have to say that uh, this is my latest guess as to when the rapture will occur, when the sudden destruction will occur, when the Russian attack on America will occur. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles is given great emphasis in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Now, uh, chapter 14, verse 1 through, through 7 is about the second coming. And I used to think that uh, the rapture, uh, I'm sorry, that the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, because it's in that same chapter, that uh, the idea was that the second coming would occur at the Feast of Tabernacles, but um, the second coming uh, comes after the, the rapture. And the rapture has not come when I thought it would, so I have to rearrange uh, things. And so now I'm thinking that the Feast of Tabernacles, instead of being the time of the second coming, I'm guessing that it will be the time of the rapture. And many other people have the same idea. See, the, the, uh, the rapture in uh, Revelation 14.14 14 is described as a harvest. And the uh, uh, Feast of Tabernacles is the season or the feast that celebrates the harvest or agricultural harvest. And uh, so uh, uh, it's the harvest home. It's the end of the harvest season. A uh, long story short, it would fit as, a, uh, as an op, op Op optimal time for the rapture. If you have any comments, please um, uh, I'll write them down uh, or, or send them to me at joegracegrace at gmail.com and look at the description under this video because I'm going to try to put a, a full trans transcript, transcript.